Okay, it's time to have a look at what the outlook for video games is in 2013. I'm Simon Constable, and to help us with the, this, we've got Jamin Warren. He joins us from Skills, Kill Screen here in New York City. Thanks for joining us, Jamin. Thanks for having me. So let's let's go through these. There's a lot of games here. Grand Theft Auto V. That's one of your picks. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto V. Um, it's been a couple years in the making. It's the 15th game in the series, and it will be set in the fictional city of Los Santos. Um, the developer Rockstar Games has a penchant in past games to sort of create fake cities based on real ones. Grand Theft Auto IV was based on New York City. Past ones have been based on uh, on San Francisco. Um, and this time, they've sort of chosen the setting of Los Angeles. Um, not there, there aren't that many details about the game just yet. We know where the setting is. Um, we have a sense it would be much like you know past uh, Grand Theft Auto games, big open world exploration. Really, what this game is pushing out is the aesthetics. You know, you can really see um, you know how much attention to detail Rockstar has done, and they really have this uh, ability to create these amazing these amazing worlds that allow you to do all kinds of things. So that's a big one for later this year. There isn't a date attached to it just yet, but uh, we should be looking for that in 2013. Yeah, I know you'll be very excited about that. Um, South Park. South Park, Stick of Truth. So, uh, so the creators of South Park have dabbled with video games in the past. This time they've tapped uh, RPG developer Obsidian, which has made some beloved games uh, for fans of the role-playing role playing, uh, role playing games genre. Uh, in this case, you know, you're playing as the different characters of South Park, and you know, it's sort of ironic that they chose RPGs. There's a very famous episode of South Park where they lampoon players of World of Warcraft. Um, but you get the sense that everything that the guys at South Park do, it really comes from a place of love. So the fact that they're choosing a genre that they've made fun of in the past is really telling, and uh, much like other South Park games, fans can certainly expect to be enveloped in the universe and expect a lot of satire as well. Oh, that looks like a lot of fun. Now, Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs was one that made a big splash at E3, which is the big consumer-facing video game conference last year. Uh, last year, it's developed by Ubisoft. This is the same franchise, uh, same studio that created games like Assassin's Creed and Far Cry 3. Um, that studio is known for creating these large open-world environments, again, in the action genre. In this case, you're playing as a, as an agent named Aiden Pierce, and what's kind of cool is you're you're playing as a, a character who can hack all different parts of the city infrastructure. This game was sort of being pitched as something at, at took a look at took a hard look at the world of big data kind of how every movement is tracked and how that could potentially be manipulated and subverted in the future okay that does look like fun um and the witness uh what is that the witness is created by john blow john blow made a big splash in the independent game scene about four years ago with a game called braid it was one of the first that really highlighted the creativity and innovation that you were seeing in the ind independent uh, development community just after he finished that he wanted to turn his hand towards something a little bit different. The Witness looks a bit like a game like Myst. It's this large open world with puzzles, and um, John Blow is one of these people. He's very, he's probably as close as we have to a video game auteur in the sense that he's someone who's a very specific vision for what he wants to create. Uh, in this case, you know, it's a meditation on architecture. But yeah, for fans of Myst, this would be something that's right up their alley. And he's releasing it to iOS, which is which is pretty cool as well. I, I, the graphics on that do look uh, really quite 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 splendid. They're not they're not your usual sort of stuff. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Uh, Beyond two souls. Beyond Two Souls is directed by David Cage uh, and his studio Quantic Dream. A couple years ago, he put out a game called Heavy Rain, which was, uh, I guess, like a neo-David Lynchian thriller set in Philadelphia. And you played as all these different characters hunting down a serial killer. In this one, you play as a young girl who's trying to figure out what happens to her after she dies. Um, what's really cool is that they tapped Ellen Page to be the main character. And you're seeing this more with video games now. In the past, when they did motion capture, which is how they translate physical movements into digital ones in the game, they're really only to capture her from sort of the neck down. But now you're seeing this facial motion capture where you're able to get performances from actresses like Ellen Page for those kinds of uh, for those kinds of titles. Um, again, there's you know, aren't a lot of details of exactly how the game's going to play out, but um, knowing what David Cage has done in the past, it's going to be very story driven. Um, it's going to be you know full of emotion and a lot of suspense as well. Yeah, looks that looks fun. Um, so Super Time Force. What's the what's this one? Super Time Force is kind of an homage to the old uh, platform shooting games, games like Contra that I played as a kid. Um, it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek look, this, as, the t as you might guess about the title being Super Time Force. It's being developed by KB Vera Games, which is a really popular independent studio in Toronto, Canada. Um, and what's cool about the game is that every time you die, 
a ghost of your past character shows up behind you and sort of fights for your future. So they sort of described it as playing co-op with your dead self. Again, you're seeing independent game designers kind of toy with the mechanics and the language of other genres and really create new inventions. So as you can probably see from the screens, it gets pretty hectic. Um, that's a big one that folks are looking out for later this year. Okay. Well, it sounds like you're going to be uh, very busy when those come out. Thank you very much, Jamin Warren of Killscreen. We appreciate your time today. Take care. And that's it. That's the uh, 2013 Outlook for Video Games. I'll be back with more great stuff here at WSJ Live.